So Nessus is considered by many to be one of the best vulnerability scanners on the market. In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform vulnerability scans using Nessus. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So as I mentioned in this video, I'm going to show you how to perform vulnerability scans using Nessus. So in an effort to keep the videos short as possible, I've decided to break them down in two parts. Part 1, which is this part, will deal with the actual installation of Nessus. And Part 2 will show you how to perform the vulnerability scans. So first of all, what I want to do is hop over to my Kali Linux machine. Right, and I'm going to open a web browser. In the search bar, I'm going to enter Nessus Essentials, since that's the version we'll be using for this demo. I'm going to open the first website at the top there. And here we need to actually register for activation code. Uh, so I'm just going to fill in my details here. Feel free to enter your details if you want to follow along with the video. So this is Essentials version as you can see. And one of the main limitations of Nessus Essentials is that it only allows you to scan up to 16 IP addresses as opposed to the paid version. So once you hit on get started, activation code would be sent to that email address you used to register with. And this is the activation email that I received and here you can see the activation code. And this would be needed when you're activating Nessus Essentials. So now if I head back over to the downloads page, I go ahead and hit download. And this brings you to the actual page where you would be able to download Nessus Essentials. Here you'd be able to select the version that you want to download. I'm just going to leave it on the latest version, right? And you could choose the platform, right? Or the OS that you're running your instance of Nessus on, right? The Windows, Mac, uh, Linux is supported, right? I'm actually running it on Kali Linux, so I need to look for that version here. Right, the Debian version in uh, particular. Right, so let me see if I find the Debian version. So it's actually the Debian 64 uh, bit version. So I'm going to select that since that's the version of Kali or of Linux, I should say, I am running. So once that's done, you could go ahead and hit download. And this download should not take long at all. It's a pretty small um, you know, file size, right? So it shouldn't take you that long to download. Or first you need to you know read and agree to the license agreement once you're good with that hit i agree and yeah as you can see literally in a couple of seconds the download took for me it may however take a different time for you based on your internet connection so next we want to head over and open a terminal a new brand terminal window so i'm just going to minimize my web browser open terminal window let me maximize this right so i want to make sure the file is actually in my downloads folder right so to do that i'm going to type cd downloads and this would help me to navigate to the downloads folder next i'm going to hit ls and this shows me all the files that's there currently i am seeing in ss setup file you know package file there in my downloads folder so now I want to actually install uh, the Nessus package. To do that, I'm going to type sudo dpkg-i uh, and the file name, which is Nessus. Once you begin typing the file name, you can just tab out and it auto-populate that. Right, so what we want to do is hit enter and I'm going to enter my, um, you know, root password. And there we have it, you know, the installation process has started and is complete just like that you know so it's a pretty quick um you know installation and here we could see the specific url we can use to access our nessus uh, instance but before we do that we need to start the nessus service right we could do that by typing in sudo system ctl right so all right so uh, apparently i just have to type out the full name because it doesn't like you know when i tab there so sudo systemctl start nessusd.service. 
right and this is the command to ensure that the nessus service is started right and we can also confirm that the service is started by pretty much using uh, almost the same command right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit up and we are going to backspace and I'm going to remove the start and I'm just going to put status, right? And this shows us the, the status of Nessus. And as we can see here, the status shows us active, running, right? So this shows us that our Nessus instance has been successfully started and is currently running. So to access my Nessus dashboard, I want to head over to this URL. So I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to open up my web browser and paste this URL. And you'd get this error, but that's totally fine because the site is using a self signed certificate. So just go ahead and hit advance. And you want to accept the risk and continue. All right. So next, it takes us to this page. It just basically asks us if we want to continue or if we want to enter to the settings. I'm going to hit on continue and here it gives us several options to choose which version of Nessus we want to use, right? We have the paid version such as Nessus Expert, Professional, etc. But what we'll actually be doing is registering um, our Nessus Essentials with the code that we got, right? So uh, we could, you know, follow the information here, but we already did that, right? Remember in the website, we already did that. So we can go ahead and skip this, uh, you know, this option here. And basically what you need to do is go over back now to your email that you got, your activation email, and you want to copy that code, right? That, that activation code, and you want to paste that here, right? And I'm going to hit on continue, just letting you know the license information was updated. And here, guys, we have the option to set our password. I'm keeping it really simple. I'm just going to choose admin, right? Uh, admin, admin uh, for this demo, but be sure to choose something, you know, much more secure if you're running this in a production environment. And at this point, Nessus is still initializing, right? So it's downloading all the plugins, getting itself ready, you know, in order to do those necessary scans. So this might take a while depending on your internet connection. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll check in back once this is finished. All right, so looks like my Nessus uh, database is all updated, right? And upon your first uh, login, you should see a wizard similar to this, right? Uh, where it kind of walks you through uh, the, the task of setting up scans, right? But I want to show you how to do this manually, so I'm going to close this. So I want to show you around the dashboard before we actually hop into the scans, right? So first off, I want to head over to the settings menu, right? So we're going to head over to the settings menu. And here we have various things that you could configure and set according to your needs. Here it shows you the version of Nessus, also shows you how many licenses you would have used. So we haven't used any as yet because it's a brand new install. But as I mentioned, you know, um, in the Nessus Essentials, it basically limits you to 16 IP addresses, right? And um, for the paid versions, it's much more. Uh, one of the sections worth highlighting is the scanner health, right? So this basically monitors, you know, the various resources that's currently being used by the scanner. You know, so this is particularly important if your scanner is not working as it should, like it's locking up, it's moving real sluggish and slow, might be worth checking the section. So as you can see, you know, it tells me my memory is not optimum, you know, because this VM that I'm running this on has one gig of memory and they recommend four gig of memory, four gigabytes of memory, that is for optimal performance. But this is just a demo, you know, but for real world scenarios, you want to have at least four gigabytes of memory. So definitely some handy metrics that it could provide here, you know, to monitor the overall health and performance of your Nessus scanner. Another pretty useful setting is that of the SMTP server, right? So you want to ensure this is configured properly if you'd like Nessus to email you, you know, scan reports, right? So in this section over here, you'll enter the details of your SMTP server. 
and this is very handy as i said if you want you know your, your reports to be emailed to you instead of having to manually come and look at the dashboard itself right these are two of the main settings in my opinion there are a couple other settings here you know and you can feel free to go through them at your leisure but you know just highlighting these two particular settings as in my opinion they are two of the more important settings that you want to ensure are configured properly so guys, that brings us to the end of part one. Uh, be sure to check out part two where I actually show you how to perform these vulnerability scans using Nessus. That's not something you wanna miss. So be sure to check out part two. Also, if you like this kind of content, why not consider subscribing to the YouTube channel if you haven't already and hit on the notification bell so you'll be notified once a new video is released. As always, thanks again for viewing. See you soon. Thank you.